In this video, I'm going to show you the first settings to adjust in Reaper. Now the concept of this video is let's say you just downloaded Reaper for the first time and you might want to adjust a few settings. Most of the defaults are set perfectly, but for your own personal preference, you might want to change a few. So in this video, we're going to go over the most obvious ones you might want to change. And when you first open Reaper, it should look like this. With our tracks over here, known as the track control panel, and down over here is our mixer. And up here is our transport, where we can play, record, and so on. And if you want to hide the transport, go to view and just hide it here. Or to view it again, if you lost it, go to view and view the transport. And we can do the same thing with the mixer. If you don't want to see it, go to view, hide the mixer, and the mixer goes away. Want to bring it back, go to view, mixer, and it shows up again. Now, if you want to float the mixer, put it in its own window, just right click, go down here and undock the mixer. And that floats it in its own separate window. If you want to put it back, just right click, go down to dock mixer in Docker, and it goes back down here again. But for now, Let's hide the mixer. Go to view and uncheck mixer. Now we just see the track control panel. Now to create tracks, we just double click over here and a track shows up. Now by default, there's a few options that don't show up on the track, like our input, our monitoring modes, and the recording mode. This was set up by design to make the tracks visually simpler. So we don't need to see those things when we're not in record. So if we go into record right here, now we see our record mode, our monitoring, and the input to this track, which we could set up right here for mono, stereo, and MIDI. But if we take the track out of record, we don't see those things. Like I said, it just keeps the track visually simpler. For those of us not recording to tracks, just working with loops and samples, we don't need to see the input to those tracks if we're not recording to those tracks. But if you want to see that, no matter what, go up here to the Actions menu, Show Action List, and type into the filter Theme. And right over here, you'll see a script for the theme adjuster for this theme. Double click it, and this window should open up, showing the track control panel. If not, you could scroll through it until the track control panel shows up. And we can see right down over here, different variables that are going to hide based on if our track is not armed. And if you want to see those things all the time, just turn these off. And now, even though the track isn't in record, we can still see the monitoring mode, the record mode, and the input to this track, which we can change over here. But by default, those options are hidden when the track isn't in record. Next, if we go up here in the toolbar and hit this button, or go to the file menu and choose project settings, this dialog opens up where we could choose the project sample rate for our projects. By default, it's turned off, so it's based on the sample rate of your audio interface. If you want to change it in your projects, you could choose it here and change the sample rate over here. But by default, it's based on the sample rate of your audio interface. But right over here is the time base for our items. By default, it's set to beats, position, length, and rate, which means if we import or record some audio, it's going to stretch if we change the tempo of our song, which makes sense for working with samples and loops. But if you tend to record more audio, that's acoustic based, you might want to change this setting. So it won't stretch when we change the tempo to try to fit the recording. Just change it to time and then save it as the default for new projects. Now, of course, we could change it on a project by project basis, but if you prefer to work with the time based mode, 
you might want to change it here. So your new projects start off that way. But the default is set to beats, position, length, and rate. So if we change the tempo of our project, it's going to stretch our audio. Now, if we go up here to the Media tab, we can choose the type of files that Reaper records. By default, it's WAV files and 24-bit, but just change it to whatever file type you prefer. But over here is a preference I want to show you. By default, Reaper's not going to create a separate path for recording. So let's record some audio to this track right here. Let's create three files. And now let's save this project. Go to File, Save Project. Reaper opens up this dialog. Now you want to choose these options down here to create a subdirectory for the project, which is a folder, and copy all the media into that folder. With these chosen, Reaper's going to create a folder and put the Reaper file and the audio into it, keeping everything organized. So let's name this new project and let's see what happens. It's now saved. If we go to our hard drive, here's the folder that Reaper created. Let's open it up. And we can see right here, here's the Reaper file, and here are the audio files it created. Now it looks pretty neat, which is three files recorded. Let's say you're recording for weeks or months, we're going to have tons of audio files, making this folder quite messy. So if you want to keep it more organized, we can go to the project settings, to the media tab, and have Reaper create a folder or a new path for audio files to be saved. You can name it media, or I usually call it audio files. And Reaper's going to put all our media or audio files in this folder. So we'll save it as default for new projects. And now if we create a new project and do some recording in it, once again, we'll create three files. And now we'll save our project, give it a name, and save it. Now if we go to a hard drive, here's our folder. When we open it, we see a project file and a folder called audio files, or whatever name you gave it. And if we open this up, we'll see our audio nice and neat and organized in a separate folder. So our project folder is in here with the audio files all in here. Just keeps it more organized and it's a preference or a setting you might want to change. Now also over here on import of media to project, like if you drag and drop your media into Reaper, it's going to use a global preference, which by default is not going to copy the media to your project. It's just going to refer to that file based on the place you dragged it from. But if you use a lot of samples and loops, you might want to keep your project more organized and copy everything to each project you use it in. So you can choose this option instead. And every time you use a sample or a loop or any audio file dragged in to Reaper, it's going to copy it to your new project folder, keeping all your projects more organized and easier to back up as you can back up your folder and always have all your files. And like I said, this is off by default, but you might want to change it to keep all your files from each project together and just save it as the default for each new project. So because this topic is pretty long, I've cut it into three parts. Check out part two next. Bingo, boys, let's go. Bye.